I posted these little ephemera pieces a few days ago on Instagram, this one here as well, and now my body feels a little bit like a tree <laughs> with holes in it. <laughs> I don't know if that is a saying in English as well, but in German we say Du durchlöcherst mich mit Fragen. That means you ask someone a ton of questions until he or she gets holes in his body. So I feel a little bit like a cheese with all of those holes <laughs> from your questions. But that is a really good feeling because that means that you are interested in what I'm doing here and how this was done. There have been a ton of questions, especially about this spiderweb effect, which I made on some of these pieces here. And today I want to show you how I made this. This is so simple. This is Both of these are made from only three different pieces of paper. Really simple. <clears throat> If you want to have it exactly like I did it here, you will need a sewing machine for this effect. But... I will also talk about some alternatives, how you could do this even without a sewing machine. I think if you are into junk journaling or you, you think, okay, I want to do junk journaling, then a sewing machine is something that is really worth to buy and learn how to sew on paper because that makes just such a big difference. I mean, that is only my personal opinion, but this texture you can get with sewing is just amazing. But you can do this without sewing as well. You know, take a white pen and make a spider web would also be nice, yeah? But I want to show you exactly how I made these. And I also want to take these later on and find some spots in my journal where I can glue them down. I already recorded my German video, so you can see some of these pieces are already here in the journal. Um, but uh, I need more of that because I think that looks really nice. And you can even put something in here because you can turn these little guys into pockets or tuck spots so that you have also a little space to put, for example, let's take this as an example, a tag in here or a journaling card or a little paper for writing or so. Hi, this is Luisa Heinzel. <laughs> Nice to see you here today. Do we need this? Yes, in the first seconds we need this. I'm a little bit confused today because it's so hot in here. And to be honest, I had some problems with my phone. My phone stopped recording because of the heat in the room here. And it is just really, it's really terrible for me today to make these videos because, you know, I have constantly... I have to constantly look to my screen where I can see if the phone is still recording or not. That is a little bit difficult. So please excuse if I'm a little bit confused today. Uh, what is this? This is my Halloween in August journal. And I crafted this with my Halloween in August paper collection, which you can find in my shop. There's uh, a total of three different items available. It's a digital printable paper collection. Um, there are junk journal pages so that you can print a full sheet of paper, <clears throat> but or several full sheets of papers, of course. The junk journal pages is not only one page, it's <laughs> several pages, of course. And there's also ephemera available. For example, this little envelope or these pockets, tags, journaling cards, and so on. And there's also a junk journal kit. That means that you get the ephemera and the pages in one item. I will link everything down below for you in the description box so that you can check that out. And there's also a playlist available where I have put in all of the videos I have already published about this journal. You can also find the paper premiere video in that playlist that was a premiere here on, premiere here on YouTube where we had a little chat. The chat is not active anymore. It was only active during this premiere. But you can, of course, watch the replay and get more information about this journal and the paper collection and also different surfaces to print your printables on. Perhaps that is interesting for you if you have missed that. So um, you can find all the links down below in the description box. I will put this away for a second because... Oh my goodness, I don't have space here. Because we first... We'll make these little pieces and then we can... Why have I put the journal away? <laughs> we need focal points. Holy cow. 
and then later on we can search for a spot where or several spots where we can put this uh, I mentioned it I'm a little bit confused today I'm so sorry we need to find something <clears throat> that we can use as a focal point and I thought we can take for example, one of the tags from the ephemera pack, from the Halloween and August ephemera pack, and turn that into a focal point. I don't want to use this whole tag, but this gives me the possibility to show you how to turn the such a tag into something Yeah, that is then in the end your very own piece. You don't necessarily have to use these tags, which come with the ephemera pack, as tags. Yeah, that is what I'm trying to say. So let's take him and I think I have already also some prints of the other thing I have used to make <clears throat> this here because this woman is not from the Halloween in August ephemera pack but this is from a different printable from my shop that comes from the vintage photo strips halloween edition the same is for this little photo here you can see these are those squared photos really vintage really halloween ish and they come in full sheets so this is just a portion of the sheet and you have all of these little photos which you can then later on cut like you want i have called them vintage photo strips because you can cut them into strips like so or in the other direction and use them as strips but of course you can also use the single photos how about this one so let's take this one and where's the tag now oh my goodness i'm not so sure if i can manage to do this yet today so we have this which is already the perfect format, I would say, the perfect proportion. But for this, I want to take my paper trimmer and trim this down a little bit. So first of all, I want to show you how you can easily turn this tag, sh ooh, tag shape into something else. For example, a rectangle. Mm, we will have to cut a little bit of his hair off, but I think that is not the problem. I mean, you could even, you know, just cut it like, like this. And leave these cut corners but I, I don't like that so much when that looks weird then but it's personal preference as well so I just cut this off so that I have a straight line here and I turn this around and try to imagine how this could be in the end mm -hmm, perhaps like this doesn't really matter then we can use this here as a tiny journaling card or you know the image here now is a little bit weird. We only have the hands here <laughs> left. But you could also use this for die cutting. Don't throw this away. Yeah, great collage photo or something like that. So then we have both of these. And when we have the size of these, you can see they are very different size wise. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, we can decide what else we want to put for the other layers. These pieces, as I said, are made from three different pieces of paper. Yeah, that is really not much. It's really easy and you can basically take whatever you want. I have chosen these, uh, these little pieces here, because I have made them during a live by Tim Holtz. I, I was watching his live and I did what he was doing in the video and I was crafting along with him. Yeah, so these were laying on my desk. So why... Uh, can't I use them now? I mean, yeah, why have I made them? Of course, I want to use this stuff. So what is this? This is just some watercolor paper, which I have embossed with an embossing folder or different embossing folders. And then I have sprayed some oxide spray, spray stain and also mica stain spray on here. On this one, I have additionally used some translucent texture paste through a stencil. And I think these came out really, really beautifully. So this one here with these letters, I want to make even a little bit more interesting by using some archival ink. I have this jet black color here. And I take this. Do we want to have this everywhere? Yeah, I think so. I like it when the letters come out really, really extremely with this folder. So now we can check if we like this and oh yes, look, 
this looks really cool, especially in combination with this black frame around the photo. So if we like this, we can take another of these. I mean, this would work as well. Works perhaps even better. Oh, decisions, I can see them coming. So <laughs> what shall we use, this or this? That really doesn't matter. I really like this extreme color in the background here. <clears throat> this would work as well, but mm, I, I think I want to take this one. I think if I put both of these next to each other, then they are a little bit more matchy matchy. <laughs> I, do, I think I have my matchy matchy day today. <laughs> I want to take the archival link again and go over this with exactly the same goal like on the other one but here i can see that i like it better when it's not so regular oh this is so satisfying this sounds a little bit like rain <laughs> so then we have this also works for both of them but i think i like this better on here so let's do this combination and now let's just make a little trick because there's the easiest trick in the world how you could make these things even more interesting just with two different backgrounds, this one and this one. Let's see how we want to have this. Let's just cut this off. And then we have this additional piece. Let's then take this. So then we have this, we have this, and now we can take both of these pieces and do it like this and take this one and put that somewhere here as an additional layer. And I'm just realizing I haven't even done that here. Here we have one, two, three pieces, the same here, one, two, three, and here we will now then have four pieces in total. But I think you got what I'm I'm trying to say here. Just use what you have and what you just have cut off and just put that somewhere and then it looks good. You could even we could even move this more like so so that we can then see more of this gorgeous embossed paper. I think that I like that even better. Let's take this one and find a cool position for that. What do we think about this? Also moving it more downwards so that we see a lot of this. I really like that, especially because it's somehow empty space, but at the same time so interesting. I really like that. Okay, that is approximately what we want to do. And then we need the frames. Where are here? I am totally prepared today. <laughs> I, I found both of these frames here on my table. They were left over from another project. The, these come also from a printable from my shop that's called Let's Frame It. It's an ephemera pack with uh, a ton of these frames in different sizes and different width and also these windows are different sizes. And they are meant to use with your photos you have. You can have a, a really big variety of photos in here because, <clears throat> and that is something that I want to mention here, because there have been a few people who have been confused, or I think it was only one person who was confused. <laughs> Let me mention this. Look, for example, this... Uh, and I got some weird messages on Etsy and that was not so nice. So I tried to cover this little topic here so that you are not confused. If you put this on here, then by coincidence, the photo fits into this frame. These frames are not, not meant to fit any of my printables in my shop. That is on purpose, yeah, that it doesn't fit. Why? Because I want you to get creative with these frames. <clears throat> and I don't know how that came, but this person on uh, who messaged me on Etsy thought 
that I said in one of my videos that these frames fit the vintage photo strips, but, but I never said that. I have checked every single of my videos uh, because I thought perhaps I accidentally said it and that would be a catastrophe because I, I uh, didn't want to say that because it is not designed for that. Yeah, It is not designed to fit these photos from the vintage photo strips <laughs> because what I wanted to have with these frames in my shop is something where you can play around really extremely because look if you put the photo behind here I, I do it really extremely so that you can see what I mean I move it even more down so that you can see better what I mean if you put the photo in here now you have a cool frame around the photo but you have this thing here where the background peeks through the frame. That is the purpose of these frames, Yeah, that you have different proportions of these holes in the frames so that you can vary with different photos. Look, if I put it like so, for example, the whole thing looks totally different. And now, in my eyes, this photo fits this frame just perfectly even if here is a little space, the space is the thing that makes this frame interesting. And I don't want to sound arrogant, but that is why my ephemera pack with these frames is different from others. <laughs> Sorry, but that is what I thought behind that. Sorry if that sounds arrogant or so, but that is what I thought behind the design of these frames. The same here. If you put this on here, you get a totally different portion of the photo behind so that you can decide, what do I want to have? Do I want to have a rectangular photo? Do I want to have, for example, something like this? Or do I want to put him behind the frame like so, so that then this is peeking through here? So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so uh, now I could, can't remember how I had this before. Yeah. And I don't even know how I want to do this. Let's see. Because that is, I mean, that is the beauty of these frames. You can do what you want and you can move that around how you want. You can even say, okay, I put the frame here. And instead of putting the photo behind the frame, like we've done it here, I put it like so here over this. And it still makes sense. Or perhaps that is the moment where you say, okay, now it now it makes sense before it <laughs> doesn't it didn't make sense. Uh, but mm, this arrangement is not my cup of tea. Let's see. I think I want to have this like so instead of the other direction. And I think I want to put this somehow like mm, like this so that it can even peek out here then we see more of the letters i'm thinking about putting this in an angle here i want to put a little bit of glue here because in a second i want to show you how i have sewn these or how I, not i haven't sewn them yet louisa <laughs> how i will sew these and for that, I want to have them in exactly this position where you see them now, um, because otherwise you could be confused and I don't want you to be confused. That is the only reason. So let's press this down for a while so that we can take this to the sewing machine without moving it. So here we do the same. And if you don't have a sewing machine, an alternative to do this project could be to use some stamps which have a sewing. Uh, in, um, how is that called? You know, stamps that look like there was sewing. You know what I mean? And if you have something like that, you can try to emboss the stamp impression, for example, with white embossing powder, then it looks even more realistic, like real sewing. I say white embossing powder because I used a white thread here. Of course, you can use any other color as well if you want. Um, but for a spider web, it makes perhaps sense to use white when 
the contrast to the image is big enough. I also thought about using black thread for a spider web when the image is perhaps uh, too light for using white thread. So my phone stopped recording again, so I have taken the chance to go to my sewing machine here. I hope that this will work now. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to sew with a zigzag stitching around the photo here. That is what I have done on my pieces I have shown on Instagram and in the beginning of this video also. So I choose a zigzag stitching that I like. I mean from the proportion and then I go back and no yeah uh, like so and I'm so sorry and then back so that this is sealed and that it can't open anymore and then I just go around the whole photo with my zigzag stitching and this probably also explains why you won't need glue won't necessarily need glue because when you sew over this everything is attached to each other even without any glue When I come to the end here, I go again back and forth to seal the sewing there. And then I can just do it like this. Cut these threads off. I like to leave these a little longer because that adds to the texture and the interest of this as well. And when we have this, we can focus on this frame from the Let's Frame It ephemera pack. That is what I have in front of my eyes now and I try to ignore the, all of the rest. Yeah? So that means I want to go mm, yeah, <laughs> around the frame but also over the photo. So I start here in the corner of the frame. You can start wherever you want but somewhere we have to start. And now I take a running stitch and I have a really long running stitch so because I think that looks better for this spider web effect seal this and then when we have a, a few stitches we take this and I'm just realizing that you can't see this so well oh my goodness it's so hard for me to to film next to my sewing machine let me try to fix this problem Perhaps it's easier to see if I do it like this. I hope it's not too too wonky for you now. So when I have this, I want to have my next sewing line across the photo somehow. So I just lift this so that I'm able to turn this. And then I play around with the angle of this piece. If you look to your sewing machine foot, there should be a little line which you can follow with your eye so that you can imagine where the sewing will go if you sew very straight, yeah, just straight. You can follow this, it's an invisible line somehow and then you can just sew over this. Just straight. Until you come to the next edge here of the frame, then we turn this around so that we can then sew parallel to the edge. And I'm realizing that this is still not what I want. Let me see. My, this thing is not handy for what I want to do here. I'm so sorry. I try to film this three-handed. Must be possible so that you can see better what I'm doing here. So now I sew parallel to the frame. Then I turn this so that I can come around this corner. I sew again a little bit into this direction, also parallel to the edge here. 
for example, like so. Then I turn this around again, follow with my eye this invisible line to imagine where the next part of the spider web will go. Then I sew straight until I reach this edge here. Turn it around so that I come straight again and that I can sew parallel to the edge of the frame again. Turn it around. <laughs> you guess it. We sew straight again to the next edge here. And so you can, uh, with this method, you can follow um, your idea and just sew this spider web. And I think a second ago I said I would prefer a white thread. Because that comes close to the reality of a spider web. Mm, it's somehow white as well, isn't it? But if you have a photo where black makes more sense because you can see a black thread better on the photo you have chosen, then please use black. If you make a blue Halloween journal, then please take what fits, for example, also blue. Yeah, So that would be also a possibility. So now, let's see if this is already enough, I think. We'll do it like this and then oh I think I, I think this is already enough I really like this already so now you can decide if you want to go around the whole frame with the sewing so that the frame is fulfilled somehow or if you want to just leave it like it is I will go around here completely and on the other piece I will leave it like it is uh, here in this stage, so that you then later on can compare that. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just make made a little bit of art here, because <laughs> it's really hard to film and sew at the same time. We can take this out. Let's do the same thing here. So I will first do some zigzag stitching around the photo here. So then it looks like this. And when I see this now, and that is the proof that you, or how does that sound? Yeah, but for me, it's somehow a proof that you sometimes have to do exactly the same thing several times after each other to practice it on the one hand and to find even more variations and more details for one and the same idea. When I see this, I see somehow the same thing like I have already done multiple times. But the difference here is that this piece here in the background is really big. And we did that on purpose so that we can see all of this gorgeous pattern. But at the same time, or end at this, not but, that sounds so weird. And at the same time, this brings me to another idea. Why does the spider web have to be uh, only on the photo? We could try to e um, expand that a little bit. So let me try to explain what I mean. Let's start our sewing for the spider web here on this paper instead of on the frame. Let's start here.
let's then go around this corner here and that is exactly the same thing we did on the frame of course and then let's go from here and sew the spider web through the photo so let's see can that work <laughs> hopefully <laughs> I do exactly the same thing like on the other piece. I stop here where the edge of the frame is, turn this around. And, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, please. And when I go back now, I go back not only until here, but until the edge of the other paper so that the spider web gets really big. So that means now I have the frame plus this paper in mind as somehow a weird shaped frame because now my frame is somehow like this. But the method I'm doing this is exactly the same like before. Here. When I sew along here, I think I can't... Ooh, I'm so sorry, this is not focused. I can't come to this edge anymore, I think. So I will stop here, but that is not a problem. You can, of course, vary this like you want. And then go... Down here. And from here, back to the very top. And I want to try to sew in between of his eyes. Let's see if that can look good. So here we go. I think that was a really, really nice idea. <laughs> that turned out really interesting. Here it could be a little more visible. The thread is yeah, really light compared to the background. That's what I meant a second ago. If you would choose a black thread here, then that would be probably a little bit, yeah. I don't wanna say better because what is better? It Better doesn't exist in junk journaling, but you could see it definitely better than here but here you can feel it and if you look close you can see oh the spider web is here on the top as well and not only on the photo um, with this new idea didn't go around the whole frame with the straight sewing because of the method we have done this here I went around this whole thing please ex excuse this little accident <laughs> just ignore that I like when they're sewing around this frame because that makes it even more interesting and it, it pops more somehow. So um, if we, uh, since we have this, we can talk about something that could be an alternative slash addition to sewing. If you don't have a sewing machine and you want to do this spiderweb thing, Think about staples. You could take your stapler, please imagine the threads are not here, and you can go in and just staple. I, I will not do it now because I think that looks weird then. I don't want to have a whole row of stapling here. But if you would do that, yeah, without the sewing, then it could look good. Imagine stapling in here, yeah, and do the spider web just with staples which are close to each other and um, placed in a row that could look really nice and if you want to have an addition so I will put a few of them here 
You could even do that. I mean, that is cute. If you think about some texture, try to add the tiniest pieces of lace just with your stapler, just like this. I mean, how cool is this now? <laughs> Can I go in here? Is that long enough? Oh yes, it works. Look. So let's then grab the journal and let's find some places where we could add these. And of course we can attach them in several different ways. You can take this and just glue it down completely and then you have a nice picture here and a nice collage. But think about alternatives. If you want to have <clears throat> some storage space for, for example, tags, journaling cards or other ephemera, and then you could just take this and glue this down like a pocket. Glue only here, here and here. Glue this down. And then you have a pocket where you then, this is probably a little bit too big, put something in here and store that there. I will not put anything in here now because I want to let the glue dry completely. So that I can make sure that nothing will stick there <laughs> to my pocket. Because that happened to me so often that I have put the ephemera into the pocket too early. And then, you know, <laughs> I had a little disaster. You can also take these pieces to make smaller pages in your journal bigger. Imagine we would glue this on here. Then we would have suddenly a bigger page like this. I will not do this here because I don't like this backside, but you could cover this up with something else. And I, to be honest, I don't want to cover up my fake jelly printing here. <laughs> so I will find <clears throat> another spot where this makes sense. Here, for example. Oh yes, I like this very much. If you put glue only, for example, here, to the very edge, you can use such a piece also as a tuck spot. <clears throat> and this has the advantage, even if you don't want to use this as a tuck spot later, when this is still loose, you can put some die cuts, stickers, stamping, whatever you want, collage um, under here and then glue it down. Yeah, if you decide that you don't need this as a tuck spot later, because I will not fill these up now. I will just find some spaces where I like them, and then that's all. And later on, oh, look at that. Later on, <laughs> I will decide how they are used. Then I also like to just, you know, put things into pockets and save them there for later to be able to then find the right place when I have a, yeah, perhaps a little distance from my project or when I had a coffee and, you know, my phone is then doing what it shall do and I don't have these problems, technical problems, then I can better decide what I want to do. But I like to throw everything into my journal, no matter if I glue it down or not, because then I have everything in one place. And when I work in the journal and I need something, then it's also sometimes good to have a loose piece somewhere which hasn't found a place yet to take that then and just glue it down somewhere. I think that looks good. And then we have it. Whew, I think I'm done. Do you like this idea? If yes, then please uh, let me know in the comments. And if not, if you don't like this idea, let me know in the comments and let me know why you don't like this idea. Um, I'm always interested in your feedback. And if you want to have this paper collection, Halloween in August, for your own stash of digital papers, then you can find the links down below in the description box. I hope we will see you the next time. Have a very great and creative day. See you. Bye-bye.